Uh, good evening, friends. You'll, you'll be relieved that the recipient coached me in terms of what I was to say tonight. And uh, he said, only one request, really brief. Um, with that in mind, I was going to recount the history of the General Electric Company, starting with Thomas Edison's inventions in 1872. And I am primed to do that if anyone would like to stay after. Um, but I'll, I'll start by talking about the company, because it is a unique concern in the world. Um, and so we have GE with a market value of $250 billion, these astronomical numbers. The revenue is $145 billion, uh, and, uh, and the European business is a $30 billion business. But we're here not to talk about the scale of this business and what that means or what they make and do. We're here to talk about what's underlying it in terms of their community relationships and the employees. Let me tell you that the scale includes, there's 45,000 engineers and there's 50,000 salespeople. I mean, these numbers are quite amazing. But in the statistics, you also see things that give you a hint of the strength of corporate responsibility as a fundamental ethic of the General Electric Company. 41,000 new hires in 2013. They invested $1 billion in training their own people. And a new metric, I've never seen this for any company, they're very proud that 97% of senior leadership was retained last year. I don't think there's any corporation they're trying to keep the old folks that way. So, um, but they set metrics in very systematic ways so famously with their concepts of measurement. Um, they decided that there was going to be a program to reduce the use of fresh water in manufacturing facilities, and since 2006, they've reduced consumption of fresh water by 46%. They reduced on-job injuries in a 10-year period by 37%, and there were no fatalities in their manufacturing world. That sounds like an odd thing to talk about, but this is very heavy machinery. These are the biggest of the jet engines of the world. These are locomotives. These are turbines on grand scale. And people aren't usually safe in those environments. It is unique in the global manufacturing. It's hugely important also to see how they define global citizenship in terms of the way they work with vendors. A company of this scale is working with tens of thousands of companies. They go to those companies, and with the internal rule that was phrased to me as, you get what you inspect, not what you expect, here's the criteria to work for GE. It's pretty simple. GE expects suppliers to obey laws that require them to treat workers fairly, provide a safe and healthy environment, and protect the environmental quality. That is the rule, or they're dropped. And the company expects the managers that deal with those companies to know. This is the credo of GE Europe, a century-old institution, and its leader, whom we're honoring today, Ferdinando Nani, nickname, Bacali Falco. This is a man who is leading with clear principles, and these principles have propelled, for example, 20,000 of his employees in Europe to volunteer for 135,000 hours of service to the communities they work in. I agree. <laughs> But, but going more to the, to the global view, General Electric donated $215 million to charitable organizations last year with a particular focus on education and health, and focusing those two things on the world's neediest people. And one example uh, under Ferdinando's uh, watch is that in the UK, they set up for young girls uh, a STEM program. STEM is science, technology, education, mathematics, or en engineering, mathematics. Woefully underrepresented in terms of women. And so this program in the UK was one of the many that he initiated. But it makes a difference, and it will change the gender imbalance over the years to come. We're here to recognize the work of Ferdinando and his extraordinary honors. As you can see, uh, uh, he has been recognized by every government in Europe and by every institution, really, that, that looks to corporate responsibility across Europe. But he cares greatly about the non-business role of the institution he leads. He demonstrates it every day. And in his engaged citizen, he is one of the great business leaders in the world who is looking to make profound contributions to the communities and very clearly in a sustainable way. So our honoree, Fernando, please. Nani.